February 15th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 2 from the New Testament. Now in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus to register all the empire for taxes. This was the first registration, taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David. He went to be registered with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds nearby living out in the field, keeping guard over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were absolutely terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Listen carefully, for I proclaim to you good news that brings great joy to all the people. Today your Savior is born in the city of David. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly a vast heavenly army appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace among his people, with whom he is pleased. When the angels left them and went back to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place that the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and located Mary and Joseph and found the baby lying in a manger. When they saw him, they related what they had been told about this child, and all who heard it were astonished at what the shepherds said. But Mary treasured up all these words, pondering in her heart what they might mean. So the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, Everything was just as they had been told. At the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Now when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Just as it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male will be set apart to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is specified in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon who was righteous and devout, looking for the restoration of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So Simeon, directed by the Spirit, came into the temple courts, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary according to the law, Simeon took in his arms and blessed God, saying, Now according to your word, Sovereign Lord, permit your servant to depart in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. So the child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, Listen carefully. This child is destined to be the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be rejected. Indeed, as a result of him, the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul as well. There was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old, having been married to her husband for seven years until his death. She had lived as a widow since then for 84 years. She never left the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came up to them, and began to give thanks to God and to speak about the child to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. So when Joseph and Mary had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. 
And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Now Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem every year for the feast of the Passover. When he was twelve years old, they went up according to custom. But when the feast was over, as they were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it, but because they assumed that he was in their group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they began to look for him among their relatives and acquaintances. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard Jesus were astonished at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were overwhelmed. His mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. But he replied, Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Yet his parents did not understand the remark he made to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. But his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with people. God, I'm not a parent myself. (laughs) Okay, some people would joke that I have 30 kids from the youth group, but... I'm not a parent myself, but I can only imagine the anxiousness anxiousness and fear and anxiety that Mary and Joseph must have felt having gone over three days without seeing their son. But I think about Jesus' answer. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? And I keep going back to that comment that he made and the fact that our faith should be childlike. And granted, Jesus was 12 at this time and granted, he was Jesus. But even then, he was very clear about what he should do. And I've watched that same type of passion come out of children's mouths. I just heard a, a young man who having come back from a mission trip, a incomplete summer mission trip, say to his parents how he wished he could do this all the time. And his parents' response was very of the world, very diplomatic, very much using common sense for the world. But just like Mary and Joseph were very righteous people, they were in Jerusalem for the Passover and had done everything according to your will. These parents are also very righteous people. Um, Leaders in church, uh, Christians that I very much respect and honor, yet their response to him was, well, you know that you have to figure out the money situation of this and, you know, we need money to send you to college and So the decision was made for college. And although I don't know all the particulars and so I'm not making a judgment call, I do see this in a lot of things. I see, I see people giving credence and power to things of this world over what you expect of us. That kids definitely get to uh, baseball team practice on time or or ballet lessons or piano lessons or whatever it is. But one of the first things to go when people are tired in the household is either youth group or church. I've even seen parents use youth group as a means of punishment. Well, if you're going to misbehave, you can't go to youth group where that kid probably needs to go to youth group more than anything else he needs to go to. So God... I guess it would help if we thought about what Jesus said. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Didn't you know that I must live this life? Didn't you know that I must be different than you? And it has to be okay. It's not going to be okay by the world standards. I can't even count how many times people have looked at my life and said it was wrong. 
Janelle, why don't you take some time for yourself? Janelle, why don't you not work so hard? Janelle, you don't really need to do that in that ministry. I I'm okay with what they're saying. I'm doing it for you, God. You commanded me to do certain things and I do them. I don't do all of them and I don't do all of them right, but I'm getting there. But I do them because don't you know I must be in my father's house? Don't you know I must be in my father's will? Don't you know that this is what I must do? With childlike faith. We're not called to watch TV. We're not called to go shopping. We're not called to sit and watch movies. We're not called to go on vacation. We're not called, we're not called to do all of those things. Those are just some of the great blessings that we have living here, not only on earth, but as Americans. We're called to be found in our father's house. And so look at my actions today, God. The things that don't put me in your father's house. <laughs> the things that don't make the rest of the world go, gosh, that's kind of odd. The things that don't glorify you. Can you show those to me? I I'm okay causing concern and anxiety to other people who are a little bit baffled at what I do. I'm okay with that. I know you'll take care of those things. But what I'm not okay with is not being found in my father's house. What I'm not okay with is not doing your will. What I'm not okay with is not loving you as much as humanly possible. And then loving your people with that same heart. What I'm not okay with is putting this world above your kingdom. So today, show me the areas I'm lacking. Show me where I'm building my kingdom versus your kingdom. And then help me change those things. Help me to always be found in your house doing what I'm supposed to be doing. In your son's name we pray. Amen.